So let's go back and close that and go back to our server. Let's just focus on our backend. So recall that our server is running now. What else might we want to do besides just serving out of static files? Another thing we might want to do is to actually create a database. Uh, but since we haven't covered how to make, uh, how to use a real database yet, we're just going to make a fake database. So the way to make a fake database is just to make a JavaScript object. So the braces mean object. And then the first key, the first entry in our object is my name, Philip. And that maps to another object whose job is professor and pet is cat.jpg. And the second one we'll say is John. And job is student. And pet is dog.jpg. Third one is Carol. Job is engineer. And pet is, I don't know why we have a pet bear, but pet is bear. Uh, and then that's it. So this is a database. It's a pretty simple database, but it's a database. There are three entries in the database. The first entry has the key of Philip, second one, John, and third one, Carol. And each entry, the value maps to an own, its own object with two keys, job and pet. So as you recall from the, um, from the demonstration in the beginning, uh, if you look up Philip in here, we want to the fact that if you look up Philip and you say get profile, I want to actually see the fact that I'm a professor and my pet is a cat.jpg with this beautiful uh, cat picture I'm going to pull from <laughs> off screen, right? I want to pull up that beautiful picture. And same thing with John, I want to be able to pull up this picture of the dog. And Carol, I want to be able to pull up this bear picture right here. Okay, so that's our database. So then the question is, what do we do with this database, All right? So the first thing you might want to do uh, if you if you want to build an app is just to list, give me all the users in my database. Give me all the entries in my database. So to do that through the back end here, we're going to use app.get. So app.get is a method that sets uh, what's called a route uh, for an HTTP GET request for a certain URL. So this URL we're going to call slash users. So the idea here, the way to read this is, if someone is trying to get slash users, the string, uh, from my app, I want to run the following function. So we're going to use the anonymous function syntax again. You can define your own function names if you want, but we're going to use anonymous syntax for um, convenience. So again, this is the arrow notation for anonymous function. These functions usually have two parameters and by convention, they're called REQ and RES. REQ stands for request, RES stands for, stands for response. So the idea here is that whenever someone does slash users, I wanna run, a, uh, I wanna run some code and that code has a request object and also a response object. So uh, the first thing we want to do, again, as a good habit, is to test hello world. Let's just test to see if this actually runs. So we're going to do console.log. Uh, we'll say running app.get slash users. This is just some debugging message, right? Okay, so the most important thing here is that we restart our server, control C to cancel it. I'm going to clear my screen and then node server.js again. Um, you can find out more uh, if you search around for ways to avoid having to restart your server. There are more sophisticated techniques where the server restarts by itself after you save a file. But for this demonstration, we're going to restart manually just to show that there's nothing hidden going on. So we're going to restart our server. should be running again. And now what I want to do is I want to visit slash users in my web browser. So I want to go to localhost 3000 slash users. So if you look at the URL, localhost colon 3000 is my uh, domain and the port, right? We need that because we're running on 3000 and localhost because we're running on our own computer. And then slash users is what I want. So the idea is if this works properly, when I go to slash users, this piece of code will run and console log running after I get users. Now, where is it console logging? Uh, it's not the browser console, right? Remember the browser has its own console to debug, but no, because this code runs on the server, the console is actually this console. It's the terminal here that the, the, where I'm running Node.js. So I'm going to visit it and see what happens. I'm going to make this a little smaller. 
So as I visit this URL, I'm going to press enter. As soon as I visit, notice how it, it prints out for me. Um, so that worked. That means my code is being run, right? This piece of code is being run, running app.getUser. It's being printed out. But there's a problem here. My browser is actually waiting for localhost. My browser is stuck right now. It's frozen. If you look at the lower left corner, it's fro it's completely frozen. Things flashing in and out. And the reason why the browser is frozen and waiting is because this uh, server, this route, does not return anything to the browser. It hasn't returned anything. I mean, it, it returned out of the function. But the thing is, the browser expects a response. And if it doesn't get a response, it thinks the server is still waiting and hanging. And maybe the server is busy doing something. Maybe the server is uh, handling other requests. So the browser doesn't really know what to do at this point, but just wait. So that's not good. So what we want to do now is uh, to, uh, to uh, shut down our server, go back. And we want to send a response to the user. So we're going to use this res object to send a response. So the response we're going to send is, uh, um, let's just say, let's just make a random string. Like, uh, I'll say, <laughs> hope, hope uh, you are having a good day. Doesn't really matter what I respond. I just want to say something. So what this says is that we're going to print this to the console. And then we're going to do an res.send. Where did res come from? It came from this, right? Res came from the uh, the response object that came with the function. We're going to call the send method, and we're just going to send a string called hope you're having a good day. So let's run this again. Start my server. Uh, when I go to localhost 3000, oops, um, users, I press enter. Now I uh, I this displays on the console. And it also uh, returns, hope you're having a good day to the browser. And the browser takes that information and just renders it on the screen because it just received literally a string back from the server called, hope you're having a good day. And it just displays on the screen. So in this way, we've made a call from the browser to the server, the server handled it, and then the server gave the string back to the browser. This is a round trip from a browser to a server to back to the browser. Now, this is all taking place on my own computer, but you can imagine this server being hosted somewhere on the internet on some you know, popular website and your browser being on your laptop and this round trip is going across the internet. Okay, so we want to do a little bit something a bit more useful than just say having a good day. We actually want to get the list of users. So to get the list of users, uh, we're going to use object.keys of fake database. So what this gives us is... Um, is a list of all the usernames. So object.keys will take a object, such as fake database, and give us a list of the keys, which in this case is a list of Philip, John, and Carol. I'm gonna assign it to a to a, um, a variable called all usernames. I'm gonna delete this console log. Uh, and then I'm going to console log the all username. So I'll just say all usernames is colon all usernames. This is just a way to debug to, sh to make sure that I'm, I'm printing out the right thing. So I just am printing out the value. And then what I do is I'm going to send, delete this, I'm going to send all usernames to the browser. So once again, this line grabs uh, a list of three names. This will print it to the console, to the terminal, and this will send it back to the browser. So when I run this, I'm going to clear it. When I run this again, and I'm going to just reload. Reload just goes to the same website uh, URL again. When I reload, Notice how it prints to the console all usernames is Philip, John, Carol, because those are the three usernames in my object. And then it returns a, uh, a JSON string that represents that same object, quote, Philip, John, Carol. The quotes are double quote because when it encodes as JSON, it always uses double quotes. But basically, it's the same object, right? It's a list of three names, uh, three strings. And now we have it. Now we have a list of all the users which is great. So whenever I want, I can just query users and I can get a list of all users. So if I want to delete someone from the database, I mean, this is a hacky way to do it. If I comment out the John entry, don't forget I have to restart the server. And when I restart the server, now John no longer exists, right? Because John has commented out. When I run this or I reload this, it will say Philip Carroll. It'll say Philip Carroll because there's no more John. And on here, all user's name is Philip Carroll. So everything goes in sync. You just have to restart the server. I'm going to put John back. 
uncomment him, save it, and start the server. And I'm going to reload to make sure John is back. Okay, Philip, John, Carol, everybody's back. Okay, so in this way, we've added handling for a URL called slash users, uh, or what's called a route or an endpoint slash users. 